This guard caught you picking a lock. Perhaps you'd like to try the lock of your very own cell. You've convinced them, for now. But transgress again, and no amount of talking will get you out of trouble. My mum's down there. I put a candle in the box with her. She never liked the dark. Psst, keep a lookout. The Mortark don't take kindly to raising the dead. But I won't be long, I promise. I'm coming, Garrett. Just... Hang on! Exorde me, Merkel! Resuscita fratemeum! Immorte ad me redigo eo! The air crackles with power before fizzing out. The child has power but lacks control. Oh, you're close, Merkel! I can feel your shadow! Give my brother back, please. She nods along, enraptured by your explanation. Oh, that makes way more sense. Let me try again. Resuscita fratreia meam. I ruined it! I ruined everything! Come out, sister! I will find you! An air of decay hangs over the stooped beggar's form. The smell of rot, the smell of death. Sister always hides from me. She likes to play. In the ground? Over there? <laughs> Some people covered her in dirt. <laughs> but I will find her again. No. No, she is just good at keeping still. She is the best at this game. I never win, except when she lets me. It's naughty to play in graveyards. My Agnes shall be dancing in the market. Flowers in her hair. Not here. Not like this. I hope the Grand Duke strings up whoever did this to her. So Astarian didn't fulfill his master's ambitions for himself. At least that means he's his own man. Though... I'm a little surprised he didn't covet those powers. Astarian showed restraint where most others wouldn't. He might not appreciate the sentiment, but I'm proud of him. No. They seem to combine the obedience and strength of a golem with the precision and intelligence of their creator. For now, they act as a defensive wall of steel, but their true purpose is conquest, mechanized slaughter, Imagine how quickly the grove would have fallen if we had machines like those to command. Imagine how quickly a city would fall. <laughs> Gortash has revolutionized warfare. The tools used to construct and control them may well be here in the city. If we were to control Baldur's Gate, the Steel Watch could be ours. <laughs> Better to control the Elder Brain, though. Iron crumbles, steel breaks, but the power of a thought or an idea can be infinite. You need a good thing back there. I won't dwell on the matter. I know that's not a sentiment you're accustomed to reveling in, but rest assured, your actions have spoken for themselves. You have beaten and tormented us to the brink of insanity. You cut out my eyes, but we will bow no more. Gondians, rip the motivator from this bastard's hands. For Gond! Prinsky's motivation sequence activated. No, the motivator! Deactivate it! Hurry! Did you see what happened? 
Is my little girl... Is Obedia safe? Oh, my heart. I thought her lost. I would give more than just my sight to keep her safe. Our destination is the Neurositor, the nerve center of the Steel Watch. Guide me there, and I'll do the rest. My fellow Gondians, flee this prison! We're bringing this place down! I want my house, and my cat, and my wife! I want this all to go away! Your tadpole eagerly responds to the parasite in the brain jar. You blink to find yourself standing at Worm's Crossing. You are a steel watcher, a guardian of Baldur's Gate. Before you stands a group of humans. He said he was Flaming Fist, that we had to empty our pockets if we wanted to enter the city. We didn't know it was a scam. We have nothing left, and my kids are half starved. Please, let us into the city. We have nowhere else to go. Your gears whine in protest, but you force your body to one side, gesturing for the family to enter the city. Thank you, sir. Oh, come on, kids. Grab your bags. Hurry. You are kicked from the Watcher's brain. The family runs into Baldur's Gate, unnoticed by the parasite. The parasite stirs within the pickled brain, twitching. As your mind connects, you feel yourself become strong, powerful, metal. You are a steel watcher, charging through the streets in pursuit of a young girl. She is screaming. For a split second, you rest control. The steel watcher's legs lock. It crashes to the ground. The little girl disappears down an alley. Safe for now. Wait! Elevator gyroscopes, triple set quadrupex. No, it can't be. I hear it through the floor. Powerful, indestructible. The ultimate watcher, the Titan. Did you help to construct this metal monstrosity, gnome? Help us disable it. It shames me to admit this. But you must face this beast of Gondian folly alone. I would be crushed in an instant. When it raises its shields, strike it with every scrap of magic and might you possess, and pray to God that it does not fire upon you. Good luck, my friend. The Neurositor. I can hear its hum. Familiar, yet painful. I helped design the Steel Watchers, toiled night and day on the first bipedal prototype. It is fitting it ends this way. I will bring down not only the Steel Watch, but the very foundry itself. This place will be smoke and rubble when I am finished. Are you ready, my friend? Like the Foundry, the Neurositor's exterior is near impossible to penetrate. However, its inner circuitry is highly unstable. I'm going to rain fire upon it from the inside out. Gond, let your hammer be my courage, your furnace my heart. Blessed God. And the foundry crumbles behind us. The sound is as sweet as a well-oiled cog. Yet we paid the price in blood. So few of us remain. 
Gunn's name will soon fade into the annals of history. I must leave now and gather those of us still standing. Look after this city, my friend. I pray it treats you better than it did us. Someone ought to give these angry fists a kind word and a biscuit. But that isn't going to be me. Frankly, I'm reconsidering whether I want to make deliveries in a neighborhood where buildings suddenly explode. Banking Looks crazy. like the big metal bruiser has gone on permanent break. Maybe the fists are next. We should probably look into what happened to the foundry, but maybe we'll just wait until the flames die down. Foundries can explode. The whole world can change. But if my orders stay the same, I stick to them. Almost coming to blows over a pebble. What's this city coming to? Nobody wants to read the riot act to a child, but, well, discipline's got to start somewhere, eh? I used to play in these very streets when I was young myself. Nobody's got the right to deny a child their childhood. I, I was just playing. I wasn't even aiming at him. This city has been in a downward spiral for too long. Only the soft-hearted and the street vermin dared to deny it. I was queuing with the others, and then I started feeling wrong. No thanks. You trying to get in too? I waited half a day and got nowhere. I gave up. You must agree, this is ludicrous. How are we meant to survive without our livelihoods? Are they gonna pay us for the animals they take? Like elves they are. My husband's still in the outer city with the few cows we have left. How am I going to tell him we have to give them up? I once saw value in our alliance, but you have proven most disloyal. Your actions sparked the fall of my steel watch. Whatever bargain we might have made fell with it. I'm afraid you won't be... The brain awakens. It's time I take matters into my own hands. We could have moved mountains. We could have shaken the plains. And you chose imperfection. I think I will hang your corpse in the wide. The Archduke's would-be assassin. The people will celebrate your fall and my part in it. Your bones will be a souvenir of what could have been. Now, roll over and die. Give up your life just as easily as you are ready to give up the stones. Howling like a great wind through a canyon that engulfs your mind, drowns your senses. Above the hell rises a screech, gleeful and maniacal. It is the way and the truth. Absolute. Leave them alone. The screech quiets, the howl fades. Your mind is hollow, save one lone voice. Bane's chosen has fallen. His netherstone is yours. You have done well. The Elder Brain is regaining its autonomy. It cries not from pain, but exaltation. We must stop it before it breaks free. One nether stone remains. Orin's. We must find her and take it from her. After that, 
we take control of the brain. And you should start wondering what you will do then. We shall see. <laughs> Even the intervention of their gods can't save these chosen from our vengeance. We defy divinity. There's one more stone in our pockets, which means one step closer to glory. Or, however this sort of tale ends, I wouldn't want to presume. The statue before you bears a familiar likeness. It is Balduran, the celebrated adventurer who founded the city of Baldur's Gate. Peril floods my province. The palisades fall, the earth does tremble. The servants of shadow and blood assemble. Beyond lies the Grand Worm, deep in slumber, awaiting a true hero's advent, should my domain drown in torment. Be you the deluge, turn away. Be you the hero, answer true. Are you worthy? Poetic nonsense. There is no worm and no saint. You sense neither life nor spirit within the statue. A powerful variant of magic mouth has been cast on it, allowing it to speak only recorded messages. The statue gives no response. Ancient Ansor, hear me. A champion is proclaimed. The test begins. Let your judgment follow. A true champion knows justice and eliminates those who stand in its way. Restore the balance of justice. Justice. No pardon without repentance and no penalty without mercy. The right path often lies between the extremes. Mercy. Police. Justice should be a harsh lesson. All the better to deter the next vagabond. Wise indeed, though I can't take credit. It was my father who taught me the ways of the just. The induction. A red-haired man is depicted in hushed conversation with a dark-haired woman. She wears a cloak with an unusual symbol on it. Tally marks totaling the number nine. The theft. A red-haired man is depicted in the Hall of Wonders, thieving what looks to be a priceless artifact. It's an astrolabe of entrapment. It could hold a dozen gin within it, perhaps even more. The chase. A red-haired man is depicted running through the city streets, a flaming fist officer chasing just behind. A cloaked woman, hair dark as a raven, looks on from a safe distance. The judgment. A stern judge, his pockets full of coin, orders a red-haired man to the gallows. A shiny apple rests on the ground nearby. Freedom. A red-haired man walks the streets of Baldur's Gate, clad in a billowing cloak. You catch a glimpse of a sly smile beneath his hood and a golden coin in his hand. A thief walks free. Is this truly justice? The cell. A stern prison guard slides a warm meal into the thief's cell. The red-haired man has a ten-day left to serve, judging by the scratchings on the wall behind him. The hanging. A red-haired man is depicted hanging from a gallows as a crowd looks on. You notice a child in the crowd, a falling tear leaving a trail on his cheek. Yes, Suelto's ethic of war would lead to endless conflict. No city could survive it. Suelto is the one you should strike. Tom. With courage does the hero march. Fettered by the taxing chains of fear, a stalwart soul must ever persevere. With insight 
does the hero choose? Guidance born of ancient wisdom proven. Peace, not strife, the undenied conclusion. With justice does the hero rule. Lead not the guiltless lamb to bloody slaughter, nor cleanse the lion's sins in sacred water. With strategy does the hero scheme. A cunning mind, a hundred steps ahead, your allies close, your rivals stunned in dread. Worthy you are found. Go forth, hero. Seize your fate. And rise, great worm, heart of the... Hells. The great worm is nothing but bone and memories. Ansel wends his way through your mind like an unstoppable river. Your body is unmoving, yet thought flows effortlessly between you. The spirit pauses, and you feel the astral prism stir. Ansel senses the Emperor's presence within it. Answer me, Facey. Why have you come? within you. The torrent stills, only disturbed by the dragon's next words. Brack, my words aren't meant for you. They're meant for him. The Emperor stirs in the astral prison, then in you. Calm, curious, and detached. Old Uran. Your presence has stirred me, as it ever did. I am awakened. Answer. It's been too long. Older? No. I don't believe it. A name I once answered to. A name I did not expect to hear again. Least of all from the mouth of an old friend. Friend. Yes. And more. Until you killed me. Have you come to dance on my bones, Alderan? Was slaying me not satisfaction enough? Satisfaction? No. You left me no choice. You had every choice. You were becoming illithid. I offered you merciful death. You chose to fight. And now you bring your thrall before me. How far has the great Balderan fallen? Ansur's consciousness hovers just above yours, searching, seeing. Dear Ansur. Enough! I gave you everything, Bolderan. And you repent. 
paid me in slaughter. It is time I return the favor. I am the heart of the gate. I am the one who roared. Let my bones rise and the storms gather. Witness Bordoran. The final tempest has come. This time, you will not escape it. I'm sore. I never thought I'd see him again. I was. Now, I am much, much more. But it seems you are more interested in my past. Such sentimentality. Very well. It's like I always told you. I was just like you, an adventurer who yearned for greatness, and in mortal terms, I achieved it. As captain of the Wandering Eye, I acquired enough gold to found Baldur's Gate. I stayed for a while to watch my city grow, but it was not enough. I grew restless again. The sea called to me, and I ran to her with open arms. Life at sea was not easy. Our last adventure was ruinous. My ship was destroyed. My crew lost. But my spirit was far from broken. I was determined to return in triumph once again. I heard of treasure in Moonrise. I strove to find it. What I found was an illithid colony, where I acquired a tadpole much like yours, and became a mind flayer, enthralled to the Elder Brain. It was Ansor who found me. Ansor who pulled me from the Brain's domination. Ansor who brought me home. He sought to cure me of my sickness, called on every healer he could find, nearly broke his spirit in the attempt. But he failed to understand. I wanted no healer. I was not sick. Of course I do. More so because it was Ansor. Even after he had exhausted all possibility of reversing my condition, he still clung to hope. I tried to convince him of my reality. I was on the cusp of greatness beyond my wildest dreams. But all he could see was a mind flayer. He came to me as I slept, a mercy killing in his mind. I saw the tears. I felt his grief. I had no choice but to kill him first. It was an act of self-preservation. I am glad you see it that way. While the past is beyond my influence, the present is not. It is time we move on. One netherstone remains. We must find it before the brain breaks free. The worm's tempest and his roar hurtle through you. Ansu's essence still lives within the helm, instilling you with power for as long as you wear it. Ansu is dead. Tempest roaring through the skies, no dragon redeemer to save us. What hope then for Baldur's Gate? Without the Great Worm's aid, is the city doomed to fall? You braved the Worm's lair, seeking the savior. Yet it was you, all of you, who vanquished the undead abomination which Ansur became. You are more powerful than you understand. It is you who are the Tempest. It is you who are the heart of the gate. You're right. We are the warriors who'll slay the Absolute. We are the guardians who'll defend this fair city. 
Yes, the brain will fall, and the people will hail us as champions. I could even claim my father's own ducal title and carry his banner after this. Grand Duke Will Ravenguard, Marshal of the Flaming Fist, the city's truest defender. The people are as likely to crown me as their queen, as they are to accept a devil as their duke. The Absolute's end would be the guarantee. Devilish visage be damned. If I were to call myself Grand Duke, no Patriot would deny the claim. Courage, insight, strategy, justice. These were the lessons my father taught me. Baldur's Gate is my home and I am its servant. I will be relentless in my pursuit of the greatest good. The Blade of Frontiers is no more. I will be Will Ravenguard, son of Alda, proud Duke of Baldur's Gate. Grand Duke Ravenguard! Will's courage and enthusiasm warms the air. With him at your side, the road ahead doesn't look so insurmountable. Grand Duke Will Ravenguard. <laughs> Tell me, should I genuflect or merely bow? <laughs> Forget the bowing. I'd rather share a cheap brown ale and a hunk of fresh venison. You in? I'll uh, pass on the ale, but the company sounds delightful. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, you hunt the deer, I'll scrounge up the ale. Prepare your belly for a roast and a raven guard. <laughs> Let's hope Gale doesn't take offense if I assume cooking duties, just the once. If I'm to be a Grand Duke, I've got to greet the people and gain their trust. First, we mourn. We bow our heads for the fallen and honor them by pledging peace. Next, we heal the city. We restore our broken buildings stone by stone. We restore faith in each other, one good turn at a time. Then we open the gates to the refugees, restore diplomatic ties. Baldur's Gate will again be the jewel of the coast.